Welcome back to Autodesk Maya 2017. In this tutorial, we're going to cover the attribute editor. The attribute editor has all literally the attributes for whatever you have in your scene that you have selected. So uh, it, it is a uh, direct correlation to the channel box here. You can see here I have the channel box open, and then uh, if I click on this tab here, I have the attribute editor open. And you can access these just by clicking on these little icons up here. So this one is for the channels. Uh, this one is for the attribute editor and they look like little folder sort of stack folders for the channel box and then um, for the attribute editor it's kind of like uh, sort of line folders. Uh, basically uh, each of these uh, attributes are depending upon whatever you have selected. So right now I have the hero shield group selected which is essentially just a transform node. So uh, you can see here the transforms are uh, keyed. They have pink sort of light here, just like in the channel box here. See, they're keyed here. So uh, these attributes are based upon the animation here, and they actually move. You know, the, the values change except for the scale, but the uh, rotate and the translate change based upon the object here I have selected. So. Uh, they can be uh, singular objects can have uh, or groups will basically just have the transform node but if you actually click on something like for example a shield which is the same as opening up the geometry and clicking on this shield which is a, a polygon uh, mesh in this, this uh, instance we have the shield which is the transform node so this says transforms just for this object but then we have the shape node, which has to do with how it's uh, actually created. We actually have um, some smoothing that's applied. So here's the poly mesh smooth. And you can navigate if you have lots of attributes in here by clicking on these little arrows here. And so you can see here I have all these different materials. Because the shield has multiple colors, and I've actually selected different faces for these colors. So here's the blend material here. Uh, here's the blue one. And then if I keep erring through, here's the red one. And each of these attributes, you can see, you can click on, for example, if I want to change the color in here, I can click in here and change it to yellow if I wanted to. Um, or I could use these little sliders and sort of adjust whatever I want to do. And I click on the red again, bring it back, and click out. Uh, there's many other attributes. We'll get into this more in detail when we get to you know, actually creating materials. But uh, I just want to kind of give you an overview of the attribute editor what it allows you to do. Uh, and it's dependent on what you have selected. So again, objects will have different nodes here. For example, the plane here has a um, uh, polyplane, which is actually the uh, creation mode for this. So if I zoom out here, you can see the plane here. If I change the subdivisions, if I increase this and increase this, it'll actually adjust the plane. So I can actually interactively adjust that. If I want to adjust the width and height, I can do that in here. Um, other interesting things you can do if you have a lighting situation, uh, like I have a directional light here, I can select it and I can, you know, basically reduce the light in the scene. Um, I can click in here and change the different color if I want to, obviously. If I want to have more of a sort of a bright, sort of yellow kind of sunlight coming through or something sort of golden. I can do that. As I rotate the light, you'll see that uh, the light creates shadow on the object here. Um, in my scene here, if I rotate through, you're not seeing shadows being casted. So under, let's see here, under lighting, here you can check shadows and you'll see a shadow being represented. This is dependent upon you know your render and how, how it's doing right now. So the default isn't that very great in terms of the quality, but um, kind of gives you an indication of what that shadow will be like. Now what's one thing that's really interesting is you can affect, for example, um, if I had the shade lighting on here and I didn't want the shadow on here, I could select the plane and under render stats, I could uh, uncheck this box, receive shadows, and then it goes away. Uh, there's also cast shadows if the object is actually casting it. So um, there's lots of different attributes to go through and play around with. Let's go ahead and create a new scene here. I just want to show you one quick example here. I'm just going to create a new scene and I'm not going to save this current scene. And what I'm going to do is add a, um, I think I'm going to add a, let's see, I'm going to go to the create menu and let's do polygon primitives. 
and we'll do let's see something interesting the torus here so the torus uh, if you see here I have the transform node I have the shape which has a lot to do with how it's created the tessellation the smoothness uh, how the objects display and so forth and then we have the creation node and this is what I want to get into and compare that to the channel box um, and then we have the initial shading group which is a Lambert and here is the actual Lambert uh, again, here's where I could change the color of the object and, and how it can work in terms of uh, rendering for the object. But let's go to the creation node here. And I want you to see it in the channel box also. To see again this sort of reflective quality between these uh, different editors. So channel box, if I scroll down here, we have the Polytorus 1 input. And here are these, these options here, radius, uh, selection radius, subdivision, and so forth. Go back to attribute editor, look at that, Polytorus 1. It's the same name and the same values here. So uh, if I want to add you know, some twist, I can do that. If I want to change the radius, I can adjust that on the fly. I can also dial a value here. So um, I can always type in a value of like 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 if I want to. And um, the subdivisions, we can adjust this. So if I want to do like literally a square or triangle, um, and then we can adjust the subdivisions here so you can see how you know this no longer looks like a torus but uh, it's pretty amazing how different that primitive form has changed all through the use of the attributor and it will be reflected again in the channel box here also uh, if you want to rename things you can rename it here so if I want to just call this um, try object or something like that and then hit return, it's there. And then if I click on channel box, you'll see here it says try object. And it still has the torus because that just affected the the uh, the actual input node. But if I want to change the whole name of this, I would go to the transform and again try that um, try uh, object. And then you would see the shape node has changed, and each of these have changed except for the Lambert. Lambert is the default uh, material. If I wanted to change that, I could highlight and give it a unique name also. There's other things in the attribute editor. Um, you can um, delete attributes, edit attributes. Um, there's some show options here, help options there. Um, and you can also key from these actually attributes too. So you can actually um, animate in these different nodes. So um, if I wanted to, I could animate in these translate nodes or the rotate nodes or the scale nodes here. But typically, uh, channel box is, is usually where you do a lot of the animation. But for certain things, you'll actually animate using the attribute editor. So that's a basic overview of the attribute, uh, the attribute editor. It, it basically uh, supplies all the attributes based upon whatever object you have in the scene. Until next time, see you soon in Autodesk Maya. Cheers.